What's going on, y'all? Self Ajax, it's your boy Sharp. I'm here with a very special guest today. Today we got Rick Rogers and his Ricky Miyagi 2. Uh, I don't even know what to call this, man. Yeah, like, my, light my up partner. Posted. Your partner, yeah. yeah. We got him in the building. What's going on, brother? How you feeling? Nah, chilling, man. It's chilling. Living day I by day. You. I feel you, man. So for those who don't know you, which isn't many in the area, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Um, my name is Rick Rogers, the hit maker, and I'm a, um just like an all-around type person. I do engineering. Mm -hmm. I write. I'm an artist, graphics, and sometimes videos, but not often. Okay, I got you. Now, what got you started as far as engineering is concerned? Like, was that what started everything for you? Nah, the engineering was really because... Pretty much back in the day, like when, when me and my friends were starting, like they the ones, they had like the computers and all that. So I used to mm -hmm. have to go to them. And what I felt like what happened was like if I make a beat that's okay or something that's okay, they would get on their shit. So in my mind, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm going to just get my own so I can just do it over and over and over. Because I, I was in you. love with what we was doing. Okay. Now, did that kind of inspire the vault where you do your daily freestyles and stuff like that? Like doing your own thing, that kind of, that moment in time that inspire you to start doing that later down the road nah the vault was really like um that was me at that point in my life not knowing what to do and which way to go with the music because mm -hmm. i always feel like people don't pay me enough attention and stuff like that so i was like fuck it i'm gonna just drop all the songs i got because i got a habit of making a whole lot of songs and never releasing them so that mm -hmm. was my way of putting out the music that people haven't heard yet Okay. And, and do you I feel figured like, with it being consistent, they'll start paying attention. I feel you. So do you feel like you didn't release those songs because you didn't feel like they were good enough? Or what, what was your reason for not uh, releasing those songs? Just tr trial and error throughout my whole career. Like, just being close to, like, getting signed and, like, just a whole bunch of everything for real. Like, listening to what people would tell me to do. Like, I was the type of person that always used to listen to what people say, like, drop it, don't drop it, drop this, drop that. So, mm -hmm. it was just a whole lot of confusion in my life, for real, for real. Okay. I'm clear now, though. It's all clear. <laughs> okay, dope, dope. <laughs> hey, better late than never. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely so that's clear good. now. Okay, word. That's dope, man. So, let's get right into it real quick, man. So, let's talk real quick about your situation with Montana, uh, French Montana, and the song, uh, Pop That. So, you said you produced that uh, the song, correct? As Not far as the beat, that song directly. What mm -hmm. happened was me and Jack of Spade back then when I first started getting my buzz, he would always play like everything I produced and everything I um engineered on the radio and stuff like that. So me linking with him, you know, he was doing his music thing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to figure out how I can advance my career as a producer. So I sent him a track. With the whole, um, I think it was, was it Uncle Luke? The Don't Stop, Pop That Don't Stop? I think I it is so, Uncle yeah. Luke. Yeah, we sent him that, and then he did the song, and everything was going good for us, like, locally. I heard it was getting played in, like, California and and then one day I got a call from Jack just saying that, uh, asking me, did my camp send them the music because they had stole our song? And then mm. when I got on Twitter and I seen the song going crazy and all this stuff. That's sick. Yeah, it sucks. So, as, as an engineer and as a producer... How I I feel like that's not talked about enough as far as like getting your 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 beats ripped off or something like that like especially if you're posting your beats on YouTube and stuff like that a lot of people rip off beats so you put your like sound drops in there to, like mm -hmm. like I heard one it's like why aren't you buy this beat you know what I'm saying yeah. like stuff like that so you know as as a producer how often do you deal with those issues as far as people taking my stuff yeah I don't even solicit my beats as a producer no more because um. Mm -hmm. Just over the course of my career, I was doing too much, like trying to shoot videos and be the producer and do this. So I just stuck with the engineer mostly. Mm -hmm. I don't even post beats online no more. Like you literally got to come to me to get the beat if I got them. I got you. I still make them, but I don't solicit them. That that had a lot to do with it though, for real. Mm -hmm. Not wanting my stuff to be, even probably putting the music out too. That had a lot to do with it. Okay, I got yeah. you. And that makes sense. Now when we're talking about you know engineering and things like that. And and people just reaching out to you personally to get a beat if you have it, like you said. How how is it that the people are, know to reach out to you? Obviously, you know you're known in the area. So does your name alone just carry that that with it? Like, oh, I know Rick Rogers going to be able to engineer it how I want it to be, or I yeah, know he's going to be able to produce what I want it to be. That's but the beats don't really come like because how can I explain? It's like as a oh you gotta be like an artist to pretty much rap on my beats like mm -hmm. because i guess me as an artist i could hear a beat that's empty and fill it up so right. i kind of make my beats that way so if you're not like in tune with the creative side mm -hmm. it's not gonna be what you looking for because everybody looking for that certain sound that come from youtube and stuff like that i get right. that all the time you got this type of beat like nah but you could probably take this and make it that but they don't right. know how to do that so Okay, I it's really you. select few like low ski, uh, stress dollars. They're mainly the ones that yep. can use the beats for real. 
Okay, I got you. So what, what other local artists have you worked with? Like, I mean, I'm sure the list is very extensive, but the major ones, who who all have you worked with? I mean, the major one up to date uh, locally was, I would still say Tuan Gotti because he had like the most influence on the area, mm-hmm. in my opinion. No, I, 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 could, I could see that. Yeah. We but, did a lot of work back in the day. Okay. Word, that's what's up, bro. So as far as engineering is concerned and you delving down into engineering and that being your creme de la creme at this point, as mm-hmm. far as, you know, what you do, uh, what inspired you to do engineering just in and of itself? Like, I mean, it- just like back to the conversation with, um, with the friends and the computer and being able to do it every day thing. When mm-hmm. I got my first setup, engineer setup, it wasn't to be an engineer. I was never thinking about no studio. I was just being an artist because I mm-hmm. ain't had no kids, no responsibility, no nothing. I was just freely making music. Right. And then when we start performing the music, people start asking us who was recording it, and that's how it all started. Okay. And now when artists spread like crazy. Now when artists come to you for for engineering and stuff like that, you you pretty much how do you how do you fill out their sound or what their sound is? Do you know what the sound is when they come up there because you've heard the music before, or nah, is it more just, so you try to be like, okay, I know what you've been doing, so let's try and do it different. Let's try see how we can make it better. Always take what they give and make it better. And if they okay. don't have none, then I help them build it. Mm. But I just got an ear for music. Like I always, like any beat I could rap to, any song, genre I could sing to. So when people come into the studio, I just naturally know. I just know what I would do to the music. So that's what I do as an engineer. I put what Rick would have did in the music if he recorded it. Okay. I got and you. it just worked for me that way. Okay, that's dope. Now, do you feel like it's, you know, you having that ear for music and stuff like that? I mean, you pretty much are a staple for the area, you know what I'm saying, as far as music is concerned, because a lot of people want to be artists, a lot of people want to be rappers and things like that. So do a lot of people that are artists come to you uh, very frequently say, hey, man, like, I know you you did my boy like this, like, as far as engineering is concerned, so, you know, can you get me right? Like, how how often you get hit up about that? I mean, I, I know no, no bullshit, at least, like, between three and ten people, new people hit me up every day for real for Damn. studio time. And once most of the time, once I do get to talk to them, it's always man, I've been trying to reach you for four years. And oh, damn, yeah, and it's just I be like, dang, well, you here now because I try not right. to do it. Like, I know they be feeling the type of way, but I be like, oh, you here now, so facts, no, exactly, man. Like, I same thing with, with the uh, with the podcast stuff, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? People are always trying to you know get an interview and stuff like that. And I'm like, bro, a lot of y'all. Doing the same thing, y'all sound yeah. the exact same. Y'all ain't got nothing going new to offer or going. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, like, if I start putting y'all on my platform, you know what I'm saying, and that's me vouching for you. So if I vouch for you, and you know your stuff is up to par, that's gonna look better on me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and I, I appreciate you even doing that for real, because a, yeah. a lot of the platforms is just everything is everything. Right. Which I feel like is a bad thing for Virginia, but that's just my opinion. No, nah, that, and, and that's, <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, there has to be a certain level of exclusivity without being a dick, obviously. You know what I'm saying? But, mm-hmm. I mean, you have to, if you're trying to truly build something that's going to transcend Virginia at some point in time, you have to make sure you're very exclusive and very fine-tuned with the direction that you want to take and, you know, who yeah, you, you just want to represent it the right way, man. Exactly. Exactly, yeah, bro. I've seen so many stuff yeah. going well, started as just... Yeah. Dang this song, like you know what I'm yeah. saying. I was like, dang, he just knocked it down another notch. <laughs> yeah, man, we don't we don't got the one of that, man. That and that that's part of the curse with you know letting people pay to get on your platform. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. if you let people pay to get on your platform, you know some people just like got the bread. They're like, all right, cool, you know, let's do it. Mm-hmm. And if you like, all right, cool, free money. Yeah, you getting paid, but at the same day, you know, what are you sacrificing to get that paycheck? You know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't worth it for real. I think the uh, overall look of Virginia should be the most important thing over every individual career, but everybody Absolutely. don't see it that way. No, that's facts. That's why I like, you know, what happened with something in the water. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. helping to elevate, you know, Virginia, Virginia Beach, you know, mm-hmm. the 757 area, and it's helping us go transcend where we used to be. Now we got festivals here. Now we got people all over the country coming here. The casino you know zone's about to be lit, too. The casino about to be fired, yeah. too. You know what I'm saying? So there's a bunch of doors opening, you know what I'm saying? So the sky's the limit, you know, especially. And that's going to translate to you, too, you know, being an engineer and a big engineer in the area. You know, when people start coming here, mm-hmm. they're going to be like, hey, I need an engineer. And they be like, hey, Rick Rogers, you know what I'm saying? Hit him up, mm-hmm. you know? So money, this is going to be good, man. Yeah. This is going to be good. It. It's for always sure. good for real. Like I, <laughs> I've been good for 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 years. Like mm-hmm. I suck at managing money, but making it, I know how to do that. No facts, facts. I definitely need to work in that area as well, man. Definitely. So let's talk. Let's uh read the rep real quick and talk a little bit about you know um you opening up you and your son opening up for the baby at the Hampton University homecoming. How was how did that get set up and what was that experience like? I mean, the label that I'm on is my label. I'm part owner of it too. It's called mm-hmm. Well Invested Music Group. 
there's just a bunch of guys with their money and what they do. They pay the artists to come here, for mm-hmm. real. So whatever show they put together, of course, they put me on it. And that's just how that usually go. Okay. I wasn't even going to do it, though, until I had the idea that maybe my son could do it. Because I just, mm. I don't, if you're not ready for them shows, there's no point of doing them, in my opinion. Facts. I Meaning promotion-wise, on taking advantage of the opportunity, like just being on stage, it'll never cut it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, what was it like having, like seeing your son growing up, seeing your son finding that passion for music that you have and being able to perform with him on stage? What's that like as a father? Um, I mean, I just feel like, especially over time, like uh, just learning about life and everything like that, I mm-hmm. feel like I did my son a real good justice by showing him at an early age what he can potentially do. You get what I'm saying? Facts. Because like I said, when I even on stage, I was like, I didn't get my first major show till I was about 24. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I can imagine what it would have been like for me at seven, being able to go back to school, saying I just opened up for the number one, one of the number one artists in the world. You know what I'm saying? So right. I feel like I did my son a real good justice, and as a father, it's like. He had more confidence than I ever had on stage. I was just shocked for real. Like, no, to dang, do that at like, seven is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> that's yo, crazy. Like, like, who are you? Like, who raised you? Yeah. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's not crazy though. That's my, that's my little dude though, man. That's he want to be man. just like me for real, for real. That's good, man. So you know, being a father now, how how has that changed or not changed your hustle? You know what I'm saying? Because obviously you've been hustling, but nah, did I don't you change my hustle? We're not on. Um, okay. I spent a lot of time away from my kids, even though we right here. Like, mm-hmm. but I feel like. I feel like the older they get and they see it, like they understand because every time they come around, it's always blog stuff involved or it's me trying to help them start their own little vlog. Mm-hmm. It's always the new age stuff when they come around me for real. But I don't mind being away from them because I've been away from my dad for a long time. I still love him the same, so I feel like it's going to be the same. No, absolutely. You know what I, mean? I see him though. I get him, mm-hmm. chill with him and everything like that, but it's right. not as like I want to. Right, I you got know, you. I'm willing to sacrifice that time though, so they can do more with their life. No, and, and, and that's good that you want to sacrifice because at the end of the day, you know, once they get older and once they start, you know, reaping the benefits of what you've already set in place, they're gonna be like, okay, you know, I see why he was doing, it. I see mm-hmm. why he was gone. You know what I'm saying? Now they they can appreciate that much more, and you know, spend more time with you now. Once they get older, obviously they're gonna be able to do what they want to do. Yeah, you know, like only thing that sucked with me though, because I don't know. When I was a kid, I never thought, like, my mom and my dad ain't like me or nothing like that. But you do mm-hmm. get them stories and stuff like that. So I just always wonder what it's like. Because sometimes I feel like they watch me grow up through the internet. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? Because it's all, I update stuff all the time. I'm always dropping stuff and all that stuff like that. So I feel like sometimes I just want to see them more in person than they see me on the internet. Okay. Sometimes. Damn, that's deep, bro. I ain't even think about it like that. Yeah, that's, that's how crazy. it made me feel sometimes mm-hmm. when I'm alone, you know, thinking and shit. No, I feel you. <laughs> 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 I'm alone thinking and shit. I feel you. All right, man. So let's let's address what I'm sure people that are watching have been waiting for for it to be addressed. This right here. So Ricky Miyagi two, your new project that you're working on that's already out. Let's talk about that, man. I think it's the greatest project in the world. I think everyone would say that, but I really mm-hmm. truly think it's the greatest project in the world. If you can get around auto tune, some people stuck at that thing where they can't get past it. But yeah, yeah, on. yeah. I got you. <laughs> I mean, auto tune it, it, it changed rap. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the direction that hip hop was going. You know what I'm saying? If you're a person that want to express yourself, though, then you will understand it. Because mm-hmm. you can rap the same verse and sing the same verse, and they're going to feel different. Right. So I feel like it's based on what you want to do with the song. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that even a lot of the artists out now still use auto tune, bro. Like, it might be very I, I tuned think, down, but. I think even the way I look at the world, like, anybody that's judging stuff like that. You mm-hmm. got some personal stuff going on with yourself. That's one of them things you have to hate on. Like, you know, mm-hmm. people hate on Jay Z. It's like everybody can't love him. That's how I look right. at it for real. I feel like if even if you the ages ten to forty, you shouldn't complain about someone choosing to do what they want to do with their music. Just say whether Facts. you like it or whether you don't. Don't discredit somebody for doing what they want to do. Right. I mean T Pain made his whole career off. Yeah, I mean you know I just saying? I hate it when people express dislike for it, but you're always listening to it. You can't get around it. Like, everything you listen to has it, whether you think so or not. Right. Like, ain't nobody sounding that good for real. Exactly. And and as an engineer, you know what I'm saying, you know everything that goes into it as far as making it sound perfect and radio quality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's people got programs that build harmonies for people and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Like, it ain't... You never know. But my my thing is the end end and result. I don't care who wrote it, who mixed it, what they use. If I like it, I like it. Absolutely. Same thing with engineering. If I like okay. it, you know what I'm saying? Do what I got to do. Facts. Now, what inspired the... Uh, well, first of all, what inspired the name Ricky Miyagi? Because you obviously had a, a project Ricky Miyagi before the second one. 
and what inspired the album cover? Um, basically the Karate Kid movie, mm-hmm. and it was on. Um, I usually like four years ago I started basing all of my mixtapes off of like famous characters. So I had like a series called Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Mm. But I just I showed. I think I did call it Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. I only dropped one of those though, and I dropped it on Christmas, so it didn't really get too much. I'm mm-hmm. still gonna put it out again though. But okay, that was just another spin off of that. And when I think about uh. Think about Mr. Miyagi It's like Everything he say Is like a life lesson Like he don't even talk No regular sentences It's always something That you can learn from And right. I feel like My music represents that And I feel like You know the whole Karate thing And all that It, it represents focus And I feel like I'm a master of my craft For everything I do So it just fit perfect Okay That's dope Now when somebody Scans that QR code on there I don't think y'all can see it In the in this camera angle But there's a QR code on here So when somebody Scans that QR code What does it do? Where's it pulls it up a page That got a list of Different services You could play it from So if you mm. don't got Apple Music You can click YouTube But if you do SoundCloud You can click either one Okay Instead of like Trying to have just Apple Music And then somebody Don't got it uh, It's like a lost lost situation Right 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 <laughs> so that, just, that way you have All the bases covered yeah. Okay That's dope That's dope man Hell yeah Oh man, yeah. So how how, how, how much you put out? How much it costs? But you know, obviously, it, it's an expensive piece, man. So what what made you decide to to make this as as a piece to to what am I looking for to advertise your your, your project, man? I honestly been plotting on that thing for like four years, but mm. coughing up the money just cause was always hard to do. But I ended up running into a little bit of money, so mm. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and get that jump, and um. I don't know, man. It's like, like I said, like I f- out here, I feel like, especially in our area, being able to live here, because people always say, it's other places here, you can go here, but I'm not there. Like, I'm here, I got to do what I got to do here. Right. And I feel like my name blew up real big as an engineer. So mm-hmm. when it comes to the music, I'm still at the same level as everyone else as far as building, like, it's for, or, or becoming like a famous artist or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I always try to figure out the best way to separate myself. And I wanted to figure out how I could scream, look at me without screaming, look at me. And this is the perfect way to do it. Okay. That's dope, man. Let's talk a little bit about um culture, culture VA. So mm-hmm. let's let's get a little bit of insight about that. So it's like yeah, what we what we addressed it as a documentary slash vlog or documentary vlog. So mm-hmm. what inspired you to do that and what was kind of your mindset when you made that? Um like I said, I'm always in a state of confusion sometimes when I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I just don't be knowing what to do because I try everything, yeah. man. I, I was a geeky dude on Instagram, on mm. Twitter, finding all the emails, doing all that, like, codes, everything, like, trying to learn how to make everything. Like, mm. So, Culture VA was, I was trying to figure out, because just one thing I don't, I don't like and I never appreciate for real is, I feel like when a person come to me to get their work done, mm-hmm. I feel like what I add to your work adds a lot. To your work So the least I be wanting Is somebody to shout it out That I did it Or tag it And stuff like that But right. That's not like How can I put it it's, it's not nothing I can act like I'm expecting But I do expect The genuine love in return So being right. that I don't get it My thing was Okay maybe they don't Think of me Or whatever Cause I don't I'm out I'm not out here Fucking with them So mm-hmm. I'm like How can I make everybody Promote me without Promoting me And the only way I thought was to pull up on them and film what they doing and put it on the platform. You know what I'm saying? So, Mm. at least this way, it's not like the camera not on me, but it's me behind it. So, at least you know I'm still putting this much work in. It's like, how can I get everyone to see that I'm doing a whole lot of work? And that was the idea for it, for real. Mm. That's kind of how I started. And it had... People, I don't, I don't know. It's like it was hard to be clear on what it was, like because you can't say it's a vlog, can't say it's a documentary, mm-hmm. and people just started just acting weird, like oh, you only were putting stretch and cartel and them up there, and I'm like, these are people that pull up on me every day, like you know right. what I mean? I, I'm at where I'm at with the camera, and even that alone kind of discouraged me doing it because I felt like it was gonna happen, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I just don't got time for none of that. Like, so, people being weird about shit. And so, all people that. felt like you were showing favoritism to mm-hmm. certain artists. The first week that I even released it, it was it was that. Really? Yeah. That quick? Hell yeah. <laughs> Damn. Hell I, yeah. I understand, man, because, you know, you don't get paid to hate. You know what I'm saying? So man, that shit is just sad to me, man. Uh, it might be jealousy, too, man. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. probably a big part of it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, okay, well, why them and not me or, you know... He's doing this, you know. I'm not doing that, you know what I'm saying? See, it so. get a lot deeper though when you. I feel like stuff like that could be prevented depending on the people you're around, like, because mm-hmm. it's way deeper than like it. Don't even have to be jealousy if you understand that what's meant for somebody else ain't meant for you. 
Right. And that's a simple concept. Like, you walk in your own shoes, you eat your own food, you do what you do, how you do it. So, whatever is for you is for you. Right. So, there's no point of me being jealous over your platform because it's your platform. You get what I'm saying? If right. I want one, I can make my own. Yeah. And even that, like, you, I understand that, like, with the whole leaders and followers thing, the leaders are the people that just didn't want to follow what other people do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and I'm trying to be that. Like, I don't want to follow what everybody else do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Facts. Yeah, and that's why I try to tell people, man, like, people that get upset that they're not up here or whatever, I'm like, look, nothing's stopping you from doing your own platform, doing your own interviews, you know what I'm saying? If you if you really wanted that bad, you know what I'm saying, go ahead, do it. You know that's what I'm how the vault actually started. Oh, yeah? I see all these freestyle podcasts, and I feel like mm-hmm. I'm one of the hardest rappers here, like, musicians, mm-hmm. rappers here, and I was like, they don't never call me and don't, you know, right. personally in myself, in my own right, in my own mind and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was like, fuck it, I'm going to just do it myself. And that's how that's another way Culture VA started because I felt like a lot of the blogs I hate when people post the work that I'm because a lot of the work wouldn't even be the postable if I didn't touch it mm-hmm. and that's it'll be it can be what it is but it's not what it is when I touch it right so I just everything like fuck it if because if 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 Virginia not gonna help me help Virginia you know what I'm saying then I'm gonna just do everything on my own mm. that's why I do everything on my own because I don't got okay. time for none of that extra shit on. All the blogs and all that, I feel like I should be on them for real. Cause yeah. I, I, I'm a, I do a lot for the area. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you know, and and correct me if if I'm wrong or if you don't agree with this opinion, but I feel like the engineers and the producers are the unsung heroes. You know what I'm saying? In the sense that they're the ones that make everything sound how it is. Are the ones that do all this work in the background, but they never get that recognition. They never get that. Uh, that light, you know what I'm saying? They never yeah. get the time of day outside of you know conversation between yeah. other artists. Or I always post like on that, that sometimes because I feel like I feel like it just need to be addressed. Like the same way niggas, if somebody do the cover, you tag the nigga who do the covers. They mm-hmm. do the video, you tag niggas who do the video. Like everything, you tag everybody but the nigga who set with you at night all night, making sure your song got right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Looked out for you on the price or whatever. Let you go over extra 45 minutes just to get it right. Like I don't see how people always forget that person. Yeah, that's just crazy. Damn, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Name of the game, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't. I just it is what it is now. Like I mm-hmm. said, everything in, in life for me is what it is. If I can't control it, I ain't letting it stress me because it just take my focus off of what I'm trying to do with my life. Okay, I got you. I just focus on Rick for real. That's all, that's all you can do sometimes, man. Yeah. Okay. Now you now you and your uh, wife, correct? Wife, yeah. Okay, you and your wife, y'all do music together, right? Yeah, she. She not. I mean, I guess she not really an artist. Artist like going mm-hmm. hard with it every day. Just something she like doing. She, you know, she want to express herself too. So mm-hmm. I just help her do that. Okay, that's and dope. I think it's just gonna be a tradition to always put her on my album. Jump, mm-hmm. so. That's fine. So, yeah. th- so how how did that conversation first start up? Like, was she like, "Hey, babe, I want to, you know, start doing nah, this with like, you"? Honestly, or? when I first met her, for real, she was doing like her modeling thing. Like, she was always on like flyers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So she hit me up to get a flyer. And I did a fly. That's how we end up start talking and stuff like that. And then um, she just expressed that she wanted to do the music. So I got a beat from one of my people. We wrote the song, shot the video. She dropped it, and then that was it. We weren't okay. even like together together. Then we was just cool. Okay. And then once we got together, it just she was around it more. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like just became understanding the studio and like everything that's going on. Okay, like, that's dope. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's shit really like letting somebody into your world when you step into this whole little industry music shit out here. For right, real. right. There's now, a lot going on. Now, do you feel like that helped strengthen y'all's bond and deepen that relationship? Being able to create together and make music? Um, um, I would say not like like directly Mm -hmm. i'm sure like playing it back like when we chilling vibing in the crib and we can play a song together it kind of bring more magic to the moment type shit but right me and her just we just like was what each other needed for real Mm -hmm. like the balance for real like everything she wanted to do and don't know how to do i knew how to do and vice versa and it just balanced out okay that's dope yeah okay word now when you're doing your engineering and you're doing your production and things like that or more so the engineering uh when you're working with artists, do you draw draft up like contracts and stuff like that, or is that only for like the the nah, big I fish? I should though. I should because okay. what like I said, what I do to the music is it's almost like a feature. I'm like a mm-hmm. feature on the song as an engineer because I take it from forty to one hundred and forty like mm-hmm. every time. Okay. So I I need to. That's one of the balanced things. Like I'm paperwork and all that shit is not my thing, but my wife she with that shit. So okay. 
There you go. <laughs> there you go. Right. Y'all, y'all go put each other. Be like, hey, yeah. I, I do the, the, the engineering. You do the, the yeah, contracts. on my ass too, man. Like, mm-hmm. I needed that. I always needed that for real. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll help, you know, if somebody blow up, you know what I'm saying? You got your royalty squared away as far as like all that shit's concerned. I just it's, think about all the loss of money. Like, even if it's yeah. the little bit amount of streams, it's like, shit, if you get a little bit of streams a hundred times, like that might pay a bill. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So I think about all the money I'm not making. So 2020 is going to be way different. <laughs> yeah. For okay. real, I got my mind right. It's going to be way different. Well, that's good. I mean, at least you, you know, you identified there's an issue. And you're like, all right, this is the issue. Here's the solution. I'm going to mm-hmm. go about this this way. I'm going to go ahead and implement that solution. And then we'll be good to go from there. And mm-hmm. then, you know, business will take off from that point forward. You know what I'm saying? It'll be a little bit different, but at least you got your ass code. You got some extra money coming in from the streams and all that stuff. So Yeah, I'm about to stop doing the, um, like the open sessions thing because mm-hmm. it's, it create too much like confrontation when you too busy for everybody. So now it's like whoever want to work this month, this is what y'all got to pay. And that's what I'm dealing with for this month. I got to open this next month. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to just do everybody and everything. Cause it's just, it's too much for me. I can't even schedule my day for real. Like I really want to Yeah. without it's, it's like, I really can, but being that I, I be caring, I hate when niggas don't like, something that i did like especially when it's come to not responding and stuff but sometimes i can't respond there's right. no way to respond to everybody like on instagram facebook and all that text messages i just can't so i'd be leaving that shit on red for real no i feel you man I definitely yeah i have you. to i can't sit there all day and work you know right so because it becomes distracting at a point you know what i'm saying so you just gotta deal with especially it. if it's for free you know what i'm saying like yeah. if it's for free i mean what we talking about you know yeah. what i'm saying i got bills to pay i got kids you know I got to take care of these things. So, yeah, I definitely see where you're coming from with that, man. Well, that, that's dope, man. Yeah. I, I mean, just as an engineer, you know, I was talking to Gerald, and he was talking about legalities and stuff like that as, as far as in the industry and work with artists and, you know, getting ripped off and not having royalties coming to you and stuff like that. I was like, yo, this shit is hey, yeah, discouraging, yeah. bro. G White, my, he's like my genie, man. I call him for everything, son. Like, if I got a yeah. question, I could, yo, G, what? Did it make sense? Like, do yeah. this, do this, I need to do this. Like, every problem, pro to any legal mm-hmm. shit, I call. I always call him first. I know he know what he's talking about. Yeah, facts. Now that's the homie, man. He know his stuff, like you said, man. Yeah. So I, I, I was definitely honored and, and blessed to be able to chop it up with him and, and pick his brain about you know all the all the stuff going on. Now, now newly Grammy nominated. Yeah, Shouts out man, to him. That's crazy, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. Man, that's so crazy. I was man. like, damn, boy, that shit is crazy, man. You know, yeah, that's man. that's definitely gonna put on for VA. You know what he I'm saying? He definitely is somebody that I feel like anybody who got questions about stepping out and all that, that's somebody you need to follow for real. Yeah. More so, he only posts positive, motivational stuff too in right. the midst of doing it. But I just remember even when I first met him. The studio that he got now, I remember the situation that it was with getting it. And I was like, he asked me, should he do it? I'm like, I don't know. That's a lot. But yeah. he committed to it and did it. And then he told me before what he was going to do when he went to Cali. And it's a year later and he did it. And some. So yeah. like, that's like a success story for real. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you who inspires you or what inspires you. Now, I'm, I'm assuming we could throw G. White in there as far as like some of your inspirations. But, you know, who else inspires you or what inspires you? I Locally or just... Just in yeah. general, bro. Like in life, like what 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 inspires you to do what you do? I you mean, keep doing? the as a person, right? I'm usually, I guess, what people call it is emotional. Right? Mm-hmm. So I always had a hard time, like saying what's on my mind to people. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I basically express myself through the music and everything. So, but it's like, um. I'm just inspired, like, by by kind of, like, loving myself more, for real, for real. Like, wanting to be me, be the full version of me. Like, I'm always, like, reserved and back and, you know what I'm saying, held back, don't really speak my mind or right. trying to avoid conversation and everything. But my biggest inspiration is stepping out and saying what the fuck I want to say. I mm. usually say it all on the music, but now I'm just being more vocal, whether it's on the post or... Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, like a podcast, yeah, like whatever yeah. it is, whatever it's gonna be, niggas gonna hear what I gotta say. I feel like a lot of people try to hush it up for real, for real. Mm, I got you. Now, yeah. is that kind of what inspired you to start doing more media stuff, like coming up here on the podcast and just you know talking and things like that, just to get your um, side side of the story out or, or what? I mean, things this off your particular chest? podcast. It just remind me of like Apple Music or something when I'm watching it because like I said, mm-hmm. it's all clean. It looked like the most professional one I've seen from here, and mm-hmm. I'm Appreciate promoting that. the album and junk too. So my right. goal is to be everywhere with with my partner, <laughs> everywhere <laughs> my partner. I could possibly be. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And um, 
I like to know what people want to know about me because everybody mm-hmm. know about me, but nobody reach out to talk to me or nothing. I don't know if they think it's because I'm famous and gone or some shit, but right. that's I get that a lot though. Like people really think it's like ten times bigger than what it is. Mm. That make it hard to live in the moment though, for real. Right, right. I can really definitely hard. see that. I can definitely see that. So what what's something that you think people need to know about you that that they don't? Uh, aside from what's already been said. I mean, I that's the thing. I don't really know what niggas be saying for real, cause it's mm-hmm. I don't do anything to provoke any negative shit. Like it's just literally strictly hate, cause I'm good at what I do. It's never right. nothing like, cause I, I be in my own little bubble for real. So mm-hmm. I don't really know. Okay, I got you. Well, hopefully they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully they 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 took some notes and and learned a few things. You know what I'm saying? And, and understand as far as like you know why you not respond things like that. Maybe they. Understand, like, and and it's one thing, you know, what I'm saying, because it's, it's all about how you approach people too, you know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. at least from what I've realized, you know, like, you know, doing a podcast, like, nobody ever comes to me like, hey, man, you know, I, I lied. Some people be like, hey, how much is it to get on the podcast? You know, what I'm saying, so people are actually coming to me with uh, incentive for me to actually reply. You mm-hmm. know, what I'm saying, opposed to like, hey, I need an interview. You know, what I'm saying, someone hit me up. They said, hey, fool. I'm like, what the fuck, like, <laughs> like, no business. Right. I was like, what the fuck is this, like? <laughs> You fucking degenerate, like. <laughs> Hell yeah, I, I mean, I, but I got, when you, when I was answering that question, I forgot what the question was. So if I do want anybody know anything about me, I'm I'm a real person. Mm-hmm. I'm down to earth. I'm not cocky at all. I can be, like if someone provokes it, but I don't right. walk around with it on. And I genuinely want to see everybody win. And I do want to work with you too. If you watching, I do want to work with you, but it's just timing is everything for real. Right, it's only twenty four hours in a day. Yeah, seven days in a week. You know what I'm saying. Obviously, you have your own life, too, outside of that. Yeah, so. I got five kids, man. I'm out here. Five? Five. Got four girls and a boy. <sighs> I'm out here, man. You out here for real. <laughs> got four baby mamas. That's a lot to deal with, as is. Oh, man. It's a lot. My life is a whole lot, and people don't know. They don't know it. Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, just having a... Do you feel like it's a juggling act, you know what I'm saying, between the engineering and the baby moms and the five Hell kids? No, nah, because I focus on the one thing. I focus on the one thing that's going to help everything up. Ah, okay. I gotcha. entertain it a little bit, mm-hmm. but like I said, when when it's some of my feelings, I can't control how you feel. So right. you're kind of talking to like a dead-ass rock. Like mm. I understand where you're coming from, but I'm not about to shift my mood because of how you feel or what no, you thanks. feel about it. You know what I'm saying? That's just... Mm-hmm. Fact, that's just how I carry shit for real. Okay. I just be focused. I'm super focused. Like I literally sometimes I do ignore the kids because I know they want to sit and ramble, but I'm I'm mixing. I gotta get this done. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because I need this extra fifty real quick to pay for something that you need. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. Christmas just how or it always is every day. Yeah. Okay, I got you, man. Damn. So do you? I mean, does that take like a mental toll on you at all? Like you know, emotional mental toll. Like it used to when I used to care a lot. Not mm-hmm. saying I don't care no more, but. I just had to come to the understanding, like, one of my people was, I don't know if you heard of Clint Eastwood, but we yeah, always, Eastwood, me yeah. and Clint, we always just been tight since, like, high school, mm-hmm. and he, like, whenever I'm seeking knowledge or searching for truth and junk, I always call him, and, like, years ago, like, seven years ago, he told me, he was, like, because he, he was the type of guy, he always into different religions and finding this and, like, government and, like, all this, like, information and shit mm-hmm. to the point that he just was, like, he just accepted the fact that that as far as like how he want to move basically like nothing exists to you unless you make it exist to you mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying so like meaning like i could be walking down the street and somebody say hey fuck you rick Rogers and this and that i got the choice to be like man fuck you too or i could just be like well this, i don't even know this nigga this nigga's tripping i'm about to just keep on being happy mm-hmm. and that's just the route i'm on right now like okay i ain't i'm Higher not path. into nothing i can't change like mm-hmm religion government like i listen pay attention to it but i can't change it like i'm worried about what i'm doing today mm. and how i'm gonna get these people to understand that i'm like bob marley in virginia okay <laughs> <laughs> okay for real <laughs> like i got music that really like my music really it really helped people like prevent mm-hmm. them from committing suicide and all these different types of like stories and stuff that people mm-hmm. don't really know and that's powerful grown man crying to my music bro shit is real bro that's dope, man. That's dope. Not a lot Shit of people crazy. can say that happens. Hell no. Aside from Drake, you know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. the weekend. I don't even know if his junk is real as mine though. I know his story's real, but how I feel ain't the same. Are you talking about Drake? Yeah. Nah, his stories ain't real. Sometimes they are. See, but, I, don't I mean he he came out and admitted like 
But no, his father, I think, admitted it. Like, his father was like, yeah, I'm not a Debbie dad. He was just doing that to oh, sell yeah, records or some shit. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, man. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I so. try not to. I used to fabricate my music, though, because I was on... Um, mm-hmm. I was a DMX fan, like, and Jada Kid's like uh, my favorite rapper ever. So when I first mm-hmm. started rapping, I was watching, like, Making the Band, Battle Rap, and Meek Mills, and Reed Dollar. So I was just always mm-hmm. angry rapping. But this girl in high school, like, I had dropped the mixtape, and she, like, was talking shit. Like, I don't, this nigga lying about everything. It just embarrassed me. So I was, like, from that day forward, like, I'm just never dealing with that again because that shit right. is embarrassing. You get what I'm saying? I got you. Now, speaking of, you know, aggressive rap and stuff like that, you, you delved a little bit into the battle rap scene, you know, working with Arsenal and stuff like that. So what was it like working with Arsenal and how'd you link up with him? Um, I basically linked up with Arsenal through this guy named X. And what happened was, with that was um when I had the studio uptown, uptown Newport News, it was called The Chop Shop mm-hmm. off of Ward. Um, this dude named uh, JB came in with the guy X. And I don't know if you know Dame, Damian Shelman, the singer from um, Williamsburg. Nah. Well, we was all in the studio together, mm-hmm. and me and Dame, we had just linked up. We we had hooks. We was we were starting to try and do that little selling the beats with the hook shit on them. Mm-hmm. And we let them use a the song to do the guy uh, X bought the jump, and he uh, I guess the next day he called us back like, "What y'all think about moving to Atlanta?" Because that's what that's how I end up moving and shit. And. Mm-hmm. He grew up with Arsenal in New Jersey, so when we created that label, Arsenal was already fucking with it. Like, not even like two weeks after meeting X, I saw Arsenal going to like an NBA game, rapping my lyrics and shit. Like that shit oh, fucked man. my head up like crazy. And then, right, even when I met him in person, I didn't even get a chance to be a fan because he was already a fan of mine. Mm. Like I'm his favorite rapper That's over crazy. everybody. Damn. Which is big for me, right? <laughs> no, that's, that's huge. That's huge, man. That's crazy to me. So, so at that time, did you feel like, like you breached that that threshold, that ground? Where I never like, think like that. Never think like that. Okay, I, never, gotcha. I guess I don't know if I'm never satisfied or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm just a real person with my real moment. Like mm-hmm. perception is terrible, man. Unless, unless you shysty enough to use it, and I'm just not that. I don't mm-hmm. want to. I want people to meet what they hear. Right. You know what I'm saying? At all times. I don't want to portray anything and then you meet me and it's something totally different. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's. I mean, that's like you said, that's real. It's respectable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't don't act like that. They don't move like that. You Even know what with saying? being around like Timberland and all them. Like, I done, mm-hmm. I done been in like fabulous private birthday party with Puffy, Swiss Beats, like Epic Records. Almost had like a little deal with them. I done been in California writing songs for one of the music group, but none of it make me feel like I'm bigger than where I'm at, like what I am. Like, mm-hmm. It just is what it is. It's just like, because I don't know. For me, it's like once you over there, like when I'm in Cali, I'm in Cali loving it. But when I'm coming back to Virginia, it's like I'm back in Virginia and it is what it is until that do what it do. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I just always I live where I'm at. Like I don't, niggas be weird when they do that shit. I don't, yeah, no, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel on that. So you, you like to live in the moment and appreciate what it is. And be real with myself. That way mm-hmm. on, I ain't got to cover nothing up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. No, I mean, I, I wish everybody was like that. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. there's, there's so many smoke and mirrors out here. You know what I'm saying? As far as trying to understand people's true intents, you know, if they even real, you know what I'm saying? They have their best, if they have your best interest at heart because it's very hard to find Jewing people, you know, it's a very disingenuous world. So yeah, that's that sucks for real. It does. Like trying to find real like people, yeah. it sucks for real, for real. Yeah, man, it does for sure. <laughs> that's why I do all my work on my own. My yeah. wife, the only person I really could trust to do it, to mm-hmm. not even just trust. Like she got the same grind as me. Like she got the passion, the hustle. Like because you can't, especially if you're trying to come around me, you can't just be genuine. You got to be genuine and a hustler at the same time. Like you got to be mm-hmm. willing to do what we got to do. Like. And it's hard to meet them kind of people. But strangely, you. every person that you meet that's like that already have their own thing going on. So building something together is just always like a waiting thing. You know mm, what I'm saying? True. Every time. Like me and G. White, we met when we was on on our own paths already. But mm. had we met before that, a genuine nigga that's grind hard, maybe our studio would be super huge together. You know what right. I'm saying? But like I said, everybody meet when they already got something going on. No, that's facts, man. Everybody's timeline is different, so it's mm-hmm. very hard to get those to align. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, okay, work. That's dope, man. But shoot, I mean, uh, we we cover quite a bit. Do you feel like there's anything else that you want to add or emphasize uh, on a concluding note for the interview? Yeah, I just want um, everybody to know that's watching this that 
I am one of the greatest artists to come from the area, and it's not because I'm feeling myself. It's because I put in a lot of hours mm-hmm. to understand and study. Like I study songwriting, and it's a lot of stuff. And I feel like um, if you're one of them people. Because I'm directing this to the people who feel type of way about mm-hmm. me. Like, if you're one of them people who feel type of way, I need you to kind of not do that and help me push the music. Because the music is really meant to heal the entire world. Because I think um all of the violence and everything like that could be prevented if people learn how to learn, like, love themselves and deal with themselves and their own situation. I feel yeah. like that's how I stay out of trouble because I ain't minding nobody else's business. You True. get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. my music is always about that. And I feel like like one thing I get when I'm um, from everybody, for real, especially artists that I would never think would say it, but they were like, man, you be saying exactly what I want to say. You get what I'm saying? Like, I guess mm-hmm. through the music and jump. So, you know, listen to it for that too. Like, if it's for people that can't express themselves for real, I had to learn how to through the music and make it feel some type of way. So, mm. that's what I want everybody to do, man. Go download Ricky Miyagi one and two. One is fire, but two is way more fire. Mm-hmm. And um, fuck with me, man. I'm okay. out here. I represent Virginia for real. Regardless for sure. of what you hear, I ain't no fuck nigga. I don't do no fuck shit. I just work real hard for the community, mm-hmm. man. Okay. For real. Well, hey, man, it was a pleasure, man. So where can people find you at as far as social media is concerned? Um, the main platform would be Facebook and Instagram. On Facebook is Rick Big Culture Rogers, and mm-hmm. on Instagram is Rick Rogers Worldwide. No D in Rogers. Okay, got you. All right, cool. Well, hey, I appreciate you for coming out, brother. Definitely, it's, man. it's definitely an honor, man. I'm glad that you decided to give my platform a chance, man. It's always an honor having people. I don't you know, even know if I'm doing no more after this one, man. No? Nah, because oh, it, it's, it's, it's... One and done. I can see you care, like... Mm-hmm. Not saying they don't, but no, I feel you. I can say you care, and I feel like I represent myself as like okay. an industry artist, and I like to look industry wherever I'm Hell at. Yeah. I I'll, feel like a celebrity. <laughs> I appreciate that, brother, for Definitely. sure, man, for sure. All right, y'all, make sure y'all go ahead and follow Rick Rogers on all social media platforms. Make sure y'all go ahead and cop that Ricky Miyagi 2. Run those streams up. This dude is dope. He's out here killing the engineering game. He's out here killing the rap game, man. He's out here doing the thing. He's been doing it forever. He's putting a lot of people on. He's putting a lot of work in, in these streets. Make sure y'all get up with him. All right, brother, appreciate you, man. Salute to you. And remember what you saw that first. Absolutely. Remember that. Absolutely. Facts. I ain't seen it nowhere else. So this is the first time I've ever seen something like this. If I see somebody else, I know where they got it Oh, from. they coming. We about to turn the city up. All no, the facts. casinos, all the little, all they about to make it look like big cities out Okay. Here. Facts. Facts. Fucks. Well, all right, brother. Appreciate you once Definitely, again, man. man. Appreciate right, you, man. Sound Junction out.